Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cyber Security TV. Uh, this week we're going to discuss the uh, important topic about the API penetration test. Uh, lately, most of the applications are using uh, REST API or maybe some of the legacy applications might be using the SOAP APIs. And so today we're going to discuss, I've got some questions around how do we test the API with the burp suite or, or like, you know, with the existing security tool set, like how do we perform the security testing? So what we're going to do is, uh, Today I'm going to take example of the Postman, which is very popular, similar to Burst for security. It is very popular tool uh, for the API testing that the developers use. So most of the time, when you come across to your clients or like you know when they want you to test the API, I'm sure they will like you know 90% of the cases they will have like Postman or, or Swagger or some sort of form of API documentation which you can easily import to, to the Postman. And then you can, of course, Postman is very powerful tool. So I'm not going to deep dive into the Postman itself because there are just tons of features within the Postman uh, which we need to see. But today, my main, uh, like you know, goal is to teach you guys how you can use Postman integrate with the bus suite to perform the penetration test. All right. So let's open up the Postman first, and and uh, I'll show you uh, how to integrate with the bus suite. Uh, here is our Postman file, and what I've done is uh, you can import. Uh, so, for example, let's say, as I said, like you know, you have given the Open API, you have WADL, you have Swagger file, uh, you have a raw text. You can also have the link. You can also import the folder, or you can also upload the file. Like the Postman collection, they can easily export, and then you can import uh, for the testing. So once you do that, the collection is gonna show up here. And of course, if you click on the APIs, the individual APIs will show up here. So I have like, you know, let's say three different collections that I'm working on. And one of them is COVID-19 Tracker. Of course, all of these are like sample APIs. So these are not real APIs that I'm, uh, we are doing any testing on. But these are just the sample APIs. So uh, here is the API. Uh, and when you load it, you can see what the uh, endpoint is, what the request metadata supports, uh, you can also configure authorization however you want. If it's like, you know, using a password, you can do that. If it's a barrel token, you can do that. Uh, there, there are just like, you know, all of the options in this one. And of course, there is also an AWS signature, so you can just use that. Uh, headers, uh, these are like, you know, uh, headers, and you can also add your additional headers. So one thing I like about the Postman, uh, if you want to add, let's say you have like you know 40, 50 APIs, and you want to add uh, authentication or certain headers to all the APIs that you are going to make call to. So rather than having to update like you know each individual, go into each API, select the authorization and and whatever, then rather what you can do is you can go to the settings here, and then you can have like you know a global variable set in. And then you can use those variables throughout your APIs. Now these are about the global variables. Then the again the other thing you can also do, like you know, you can also see what are the environments you have. You can add the environment. So for example, let's say we are doing for COVID nineteen tracker. Right? You can add the variable uh case uh let's say uh auth or let me say username. And value is admin, current value is admin, then I'll I'll also add password, admin, admin. And I had this uh COVID nineteen. Now it won't be affected until I select this COVID nineteen tracker. So now what's gonna happen is whenever I make a call, if there is a user parameter, uh where do I where do I see the parameters? Oh yeah, the first one. So, for example, in this parameter, let's say there is a username, right? So when you import, uh, there is a username field. Then you don't have to put the value in. It's going to derive from the environment variable. So every time you have 15 APIs where it, where it has like a username variable, you don't need to put those value in, right? So that's that's a cool part. And, th and that's why I like the uh, Postman a lot. It's not just for the developer for the task, but it also works well for the security testing as well. Now the important part is how do we integrate with the burp suite so we can use the burp scanner if you have if you are using the pro version of it or 
how you can use a burp to replay and like you know for the easier to manage the payloads and and pretty much use all the tools which burp offers so the first thing you're going to do is uh, of course you have burp open and running and then you're going to verify uh, it's running on whatever port and interface so you just kind of remember that then you make sure you have the intercept request uh, as well as the response on by default this is turned off so make sure you have that on if you want to intercept the response then you go to the settings on the not this one but the main settings on the postman and then you can go to the proxy and then add a custom proxy configuration now what i've done is i've used the this is not by default populated if you're using the postman first time this will be blank because i've used this proxy so many times it's just like you know uh populated by by itself but yeah, you're going to use the proxy type for HTTP and HTTPS because you don't know the APIs you are testing with, whether it supports just the HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, the next thing, you're going to configure the proxy server, so where where the uh, postman like you know will send the traffic to, and of course the port number. So this, ma this has to match with whatever we have configured here in the listener, right? So postman will send a request to this, IP and this port and uh, Burp will listen on this IP and this port and that's why it's a listener here. So once we do that, uh, there is no save button so you just select, you cross the mark. Now, let's say if uh, if our proxy is not running, which is many times a case, like when you open up the postman, like you know, you fire up the request and then you see some error like this one, like tunneling socket could not be established cause this was this whatever and this seems like so there are two potential uh, issue could be one your proxy is configured but the burp is not running or burp is not configured or listen on to the same port and ip address so now you turn this on and then when you send the request the request will come through and you also got the response right now, if you want to uh, see the same request response in the burp, turn the intercept on, hit the send button. As you can see, uh, we have the request here. And here you can do uh, pretty much uh, like you know normal thing that you would do with any uh, web portal. So generally, I, I would say, oh yeah, I want to do an active scan. So I send it to the scanner. And as you can see here, uh, And we have gone through like you know the new UI change in Burp Suite 2.0, 2 like what's the change and everything. But yeah, you can see here the scanning has been going on. So now you can scan the APIs for where like you know uh, with the Burp Suite. I'm, I'm gonna cancel the scan because I don't want to perform the scan. But also when you forward the request, and since we have also intercepted the response, we also got the response, right? So, and then you forward back, and then you will get the response in here. Now, other thing uh, to also see or also note is sometimes you will also get an error because there might be some certificate issue. So, make sure this is turned off. Like, if you are using any particular certificate, then uh, proxy we already discussed about update. There is always good to have like you know latest update. Uh, and the most thing, uh, most of the time it will like you know give you some errors if you have this one turned on SSL certificate verification. So let's say we have turned this on. I'm sending it, and as you can see, I have this burp running or listener running on the same IP and port where the postman is configured, and still got the error self signed certificate uh, chain. So the reason uh, it gives me the error because postman could not verify certificate of this host. And of course it won't be because it is sending a request to the burp proxy and burp uses the self signed certificate, right? So that's a uh, that's a big concern and and that's why like you know you would get this error. Now the good thing is in the earlier version of the postman it did not give like you know straight away option to figure out okay where the glitch is. But here you can easily disable with the one click and like you know it will send the request and you will see the response 
so this is uh, straightforward now the other thing is uh, there is another type of uh, uh, request where you have bunch of parameters so you can configure those here as i said you can also use like you know environment now for example this is external api let's say that's a different collection then i can create the new environment set some parameters for example search param or object type if it's the same parameter that i'm i'm going to use for 50 other apis i can just set in environment variable just like you would do for your system itself so you can do that and then uh, you can use the bar for the same purpose so for example if we turn intercept on and if we send here now you can also manipulate like you know all the get parameter you can send it to the repeater and then you can type like yeah whatever if you want to see if it gives you any error or anything you can try and do here you can also send it to your active scan and and do the testing so this is a straightforward task that i wanted to uh, teach you about the how you can use the burp suite uh, for the penetration test uh, for the APIs especially and the postman is a very popular tool now the other popular tool is also soap UI uh, it was mostly for the soap uh, APIs as far as I knew I used in the past you can also do the same thing you can there is a proxy you can configure burp as a proxy and then you can route all the soap APIs to the burp and uh, let me know if you if you can't figure it out or if you need any help or if you want me to run through how to configure like you know uh or how to test soap apis using the burp but the process is, uh, is the same thing you set up the proxy and you route all the requests to the burp so uh this was uh i guess a very uh important lesson in terms of <clears throat> nowadays we are seeing more and more application who are using the apis and rather than testing apis as a web application you should be able you should be able to know how to has like a standalone APIs, right? So that's it uh, from today. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Uh, subscribe or follow me on the Facebook as well. Uh, we post regular updates on the Facebook page. Uh, that the link is down in the description. Uh, if you have any other questions, comments, uh, feel free to drop me a comment. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.